Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello. Sorry, Stan standard weekly. Just trying to Make sort the chat out. <laughs> it always seems like a fab idea. No, it is working. I know it's working. I'm just trying to find the live oh, feed yeah. so we can join in the chat. There we go. Good evening. Good evening, watchers. How are you all? So for anyone who doesn't know, because again we've had another influx of amazing new followers we this have, week. We have. And my name is Emily Braithwaite and this is my delightful husband, Hawaiian shirt wearing Alan. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Well, the, the, we say this every way. So I've got a computer here, a uh, laptop, and we're running it and we've got some cameras and some cables and, and it's fine. But every now and then I do need to look down here. So uh, that's why I'm looking like this, because there's a computer. And then also when people post comments, that's what I'm going to do. So if you're watching tonight, feel free to post a comment. Feel free. It might help if I look at the camera and not the screen as well. <laughs> feel free to post a comment. Feel free to ask us anything you like. Uh, feel free to comment on Emily's chunky orange knit. Well, I'm seems thinking to be about my, chun my chunky orange knit next to your flamingo well, shirt. Well, so the thing is, I, I get changing your wardrobe for the seasons, but I'm a believer in dressing in summer makes me feel very happy and smiley, and therefore Hawaiian shirts all year round is the way forward for mm. me, because I don't get this grey is in malarkey. I'm a like bright colours, boom! Well, Right. No, you are, and actually, I quite like your chunky knit. You're all right. You got some nice feedback, didn't you, on the social media for your chunky knit? Well, that's my red one. For the oh, first. was it your red one? <laughs> Not this one. I lied. I, I lied. A plethora of colours. A plethora. A plethora. Of long word idea. of the night. Get that. If that's a short word to you, apologies, but to us, that's long word of the night. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so we hope you're well. Whatever you're up to, what have you been up to this week? been a bit of a funny old week. Oh, it's half term. It's our half term. term. Um, quick story. Um, some friends of ours booked to go on holiday with some friends of theirs. They booked to go at half term, booked a uh, chalet or somewhere abroad in France and uh, failed. And to be honest, we, 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 thought, we thought this was an acceptable thing. Failed to confirm that both of their kids are the same half term weeks. They're different half terms. So they, so they, half -term. they, they confirmed half term and actually didn't confirm so, dates. So, didn't, uh, so went on holiday without their friends in the end. And I just thought, I never really think about half terms being We different. should have bagged that spot. We could have gone to France. For Why the did we not go to France? Because it, yeah. we are dedicated to Ask an Expert on a Wednesday. I do, do you know what? I do enjoy Ask an Expert. Mm. Genuinely. I love... I love hearing about people's weddings. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, oh, do you know what? We're also drinking red wine this evening. Are you, uh, now, well, are you, are you going to share my story? Well, no, I was about to tell. I feel that's really why strange I'm... because I'm a gin drinker. Everyone knows I'm a ginger, and that's what I'm known for is my gin drinking. But yeah, but there's this... a reason we're drinking this red why wine. Why is it our red wine today? Uh, because the reason we're drinking this red wine is because whilst I was in Tesco's Express, mm -hmm. I'm a normo, uh, <laughs> filling up the van after putting up a winter bell tent today. Oh, that's good, that's um, good our wedding wine so we got married in a marquee in a field overlooking mm -hmm. the sea our wedding wine was Cassiero uh, Diablo, Diablo Cab Sav I think they sponsored Man U or something if anyone knows about that malarkey um, and it was on offer so I bought a bottle but why was it our wedding wine Alan? Oh, right because I proposed to Emily in Chile we'd been in Chile doing an adventure and I proposed to you and then we went to a vineyard tour which was the Cassiero, the Cassiero Diablo, Diablo vineyard and, uh, so that's why we had that, their wine at our wedding it was kind of a nice little side, side little snippet there. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Emma. Hello, Emma. Uh, shirt and jumper compliment each other beautifully. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Emma. I See, thought... sensible winter outfit. Who cares outfit? Is, so... is Emma the, um, one of our questions today, I think Emma, is, the question is from Emma, so that's fab. So we'll take me on to that in a minute. I'm just going to finish up what we've been doing this week. So this week we oh, yeah, had... Oh, sorry. Uh, we've had some fab blogs go up. We've had some new blogs come up. We also... Oh, we, took, we, we launched our winter submissions on Instagram for photographers to submit their new weddings for, for the blog. And we had a cracker of one arrive today, which I'm really excited to show. It's not going to come up for another couple of weeks yet. We're going to schedule it for November. But it was snowy and it was mountainy and it was stunning. So I can't wait to share that one with you. Um, we also launched the Outside Bride YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, that's probably more important yeah. than I've given so it credit for. So for anyone who knows that's been following for the last year, we have... We have two brands, obviously, without the outside bride, and we have baby bell tents, mm. and we've always kind of merged the two, and we've now decided that actually the outside bride 
it's, it deserves its own little Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, this is not a guillotine. They're not being separated. No. There's nothing funny that but anyone would particularly we, give a monkey's we, about. We put but, all of our asking experts yeah. onto YouTube for you to reference back to later on. We've got some really cool bits coming up with some trend kind of stuff. I've been yeah. doing some filming this week in this area. So we're, yeah, we're, we've been we're doing spending some... a lot of time in this area at the moment, yeah. aren't we? Is the, does this work? Does anyone like this, dislike this? Well, we, we're thinking about, as Anna's got his this going on we might, we might add some palm trees or something to it to oh, make it be a bit I more tropical that. um but yes we've got so that's coming up so we are we've just launched it this week um there's loads of stuff about to be uploaded to it we're going to be growing that you've got that we're even down to like you're going to be kind of chatting about some of the styled shoot yeah, blog posts, aren't you? So, uh, actually we've got one of them coming soon i'm just editing that now if i'm honest it's not i was a bit cryptic but yeah. it's right there being edited so we might share that in, in the group this week so if you fancy pop along to that yes. that'd be lovely if you wanted to show us some love there yeah and we also please subscribe uh, we're, actually if we're honest it's so new it's still quite difficult to find, find it so I will, I will put a link in and because um, if you type in the outside bride all you will actually see is Bay Lily Bell Tents because we've spent a year putting it on Bay Lily Bell Tents. Um, First World Problems. Also, module or part two of module one oh, of the planning, planning session sessions. Went live this week. Module two. So, if you are in the planning sessions, which is our. Um, I've gone blank. I know exactly what it is. I've forgotten how to say it. It's um, your at home wedding planning tool. Yes, your at home wedding planning tool. Six month membership, twenty pound a month to give you everything you need to know to plan the most amazing wedding, outdoor wedding ever. Yep. And module one, part two went live went on live. Monday. It's not too late. You, you don't have to put into in particular parts of the year. You can literally start as soon as you start. You can start planning. Yeah. Chapter Basically, one it's, it's all automated. So when you start, you get module one, part one straight away and your six months starts. So when we say part two's out, you haven't missed part one. You just start from yeah. part one and start your six months, don't you? Absolutely. It's quite, it's all very slick and good. We like, we, we do try, we do try, we, <laughs> we do try, try, don't we? We haven't for all our faults, we do try hard. Yes. Um, so let's get through to, we had a couple of questions this week. One was definitely Emma, and I know Emma's watching, so we'll do Emma first. Yeah, because Meg said she had an overview, but said she was going to post a bit more information. But I think we could talk about. Uh, sorry, something's gone funny. I think we can we can keep talking. Yeah. We can talk about uh, Meg's uh, anyway. But let's talk about Emma's. So, from what Emma, Doctor Reed, Emma's question word. Yes, words. that's why I was trying to do this. Emma has put. I've got a random one. Emma, it's not that random. Actually, we think this is this is my level it's, of detail. It's common sense. Yeah, it's, this it's is my level of detail. About. Uh, suddenly thought the other night as I was trying to sleep. Yeah, got that. Uh, get that, I should say, not got that. Coats and bags. What are people going to do with them? We've got long tables and benches for the wedding breakfast. Then another 80 or so arriving for the evening. Also seating. Obviously everyone for the day will have a seat, but the evening guests, would you ensure they had somewhere to sit? Seems a bit tight not having a chair for everyone, but just don't see where I could cram seating and tables for another 80. Can we answer the... Would it, would it, no, we'll start, we'll start in order. Okay, it, fine. First so, first, tables and chairs and bags. Chairs and bags and coats and bags. It all depends, really. As a, as a simple one, is when in the year you're getting married. Because if you're getting married in August, for example, and the August we've just had, no one's going to have a coat to hang up anyway, because it's no. so so warm. If it's October, like, like now, you might be having a few layers, but don't worry too much about the logistics of coats, because in a summer outdoor wedding you may not have that many coats yeah can you but, let us know when it is can you just pop a month up um but please um you need to think about the fact that people will have jackets they will have to open suits you might have pashminas you might have all that kind of stuff so it really depends on what kind of setup you're going to have if you can have a marquee or a teepee or anything like that if you can have any entrance marquees like the, the chinese hatching get are you going to have any um sort of situation between you and the toilets is there any covered spaces because quite simply if you wanted to have an area to do so you could just put a runner rail you know go to ikea and get a cheap runner rail to pop in the corner so i did have an idea about this yeah. this is this is one of alan's slightly uh, off the wall ideas which sometimes emily doesn't like i thought if this was going for a, like a true rustic outdoor wedding why not put coat hangers on a tree, tree. And, and I really thought this was a good idea. Like, you could even... I mean, don't get me wrong, it'll take a little bit of effort, and then weather-dependent and all these... Well, put a tent over the... Trees in tents, I think, is, although it's been around forever, is going to be a big thing. It's going to I, I think I, people I agree, are going to embrace trees in tents. So, so, so next year, when we're watching back, we've called this... Yeah, trees in tents. <laughs> so, but I, I was thinking, like, you know, even if you put some, like, rope round the branches of a tree... 
and coat hangers like a peg holding the coat hanger in place. Just almost making a feature. I know it, it could you look rubbish. You, you don't need to overcomplicate it. No, you don't it. need you don't. to overcomplicate it. That, that's a lovely kind of design feature. Um, <laughs> Are you dismissing my <laughs> no, random not. idea? But, that's a random idea for your random question. If there's anywhere question. in your space that is, has logically got a space for a coat rail... End would, of July, Emma said. Yeah, so don't worry too much. You, you'll have the odd, jacket, you'll have the, odd, odd suit jackets, but you'll also have places underneath the tables. Now, moving into your second part of your question, which was about seating for your day guests versus your evening guests, um, the thing you need to remember is that, so how many, did you say how many day, day uh, guests? And it talked are? about 80 plus 80. So, so 100, 80, 100, for, 100, the, 80 yeah. for the breakfast. So your 80 guests that are there for the daytime, you can guarantee will not have their bums and seats from 3 o'clock to 11 o'clock at night. They're all going to be moving around once the evening starts and the music starts and the bar is open and the outdoor space is open because it's going to be the most sunny, warm, amazing evening ever. Yes, standard. Yes. Um, people are going to be moving around anyway, so you're not going to have 80 spots taken by your by your day guests. And hopefully, you know, your evening guests may know some of the day guests anyway, so there'll be opportunity for people to mingle and, and find each other anyway. Um, you don't need to provide 80 extra seats. That's just illogical. Number yeah. one, you can't... And, and an absolute waste of money. It's an absolute, because you won't use it. Sorry, them. Jill says, hangers in trees, wicked like that idea. Jill... <sighs> You're my favourite person of the night. Thank you. Jill, I've not heard your name. I'm going to assume you're fairly new to the group. Don't <laughs> indulge him. Keep answering Don't the question. Don't indulge him. Tables and chairs. Table, uh, chairs. Yeah, so, Sorry, um, chairs. To, to hire in 80 extra seating options, benches, tables, is yeah, logical. Yeah, somewhere between two to five pounds yeah. per chair. Yeah. Number one, you probably won't fit it because if you have a marquee for your day guest, you probably... Or a TV, you have a specific size in mind, so you're not going to buy extra space to put your extra evening guests in later on. Um, and uh, like I said, everyone's going to be moving around. You're not going to have fixed people sat to their chairs. Everyone's going to be up at the bar, dancing, or you know, everything else in between. So I would say bring some extra seats in, maybe a couple of extra benches. I, did, I was um, sitting here thinking, you, yeah. you, got, you know, if you've got 80... I might get 10 to 20 just to put around chairs. the Chairs? Yeah, yeah, yeah chairs. Not benches. Yeah, not benches. Um, but, you know, or, that, that's that's where your outdoor seating thing comes into. So... Wood logs, wood tree stumps. Tree stumps. Hay bales. Hay bales if you want to go down a hay bale if you want to. Is bale. milk crates a done thing? Have I just come yeah. up with this randomly? Benches, extra, extra long benches. Picnic rugs on the floor is a great Staffle one. Planks Staffle planks on planks barrels. On barrels too. Yeah. Be a bit creative of what your space is, what you're going to be doing with your space. And I've just had another thought on the the coat, so we'll come back to it as okay. well. Okay. But um, we had, one of our best friends got married a good few years ago, and they had, their whole theme was picnic anyway. So they oh, yes. just bought shed loads of picnic, picnic yeah. on the floor. We sat on the floor, it was fine. To, because people are going to be dancing, they're going to be moving, and they're not going to sit in one space. And the joy of ad hoc seating, whether it be picnic blankets or planks on whatever, is you can wait and see what the weather's doing, you know. So I imagine whoever you're getting your equipment, your structure from, and your tables and chairs, but if you go can I add on 20 chairs at the last minute or you decide you know they won't I can't imagine them having a problem with it they yeah. have cut off times but I, mean, I was thinking about going back to before in terms of coats and stuff like that as well I mean the other options things you could do if you're really wanting to make a feature out of, out of it you could put up I'll use bell sorry to... Emma likes the hangers in the trees I Emma, hear as well Emma, Emily Emma. you are the only one who doesn't like it I thought it was a great you idea you could put together depends on what your bar staff are doing and what your um, structure like what you're doing but you could have a bell tent put up alongside your main marquee and have some runner rails in there and have almost like a, um, a coat service. Oh, like a pamper tent. Who does a pamper tent? You can't sell in the middle of your night. I wasn't. I was putting some... No, I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> you, you could do that. You could get a, well, mem I, a member of your bar stuff take, taking the coats if you you've know got what stuff I on the day. Is, right, so 1978, 40 years old. In the 80s, we had these absolutely naff coat stands like a ring, legs, yeah. you know. The, the, it's called a coat stand, right. darling. They, they, I, I see them on Gumtree and eBay, cheap as chips, all the time. I, I kind of like the idea of of a sort of shabby chic sort of six of them, different colour, different, Ooh. you know, sort of three each side as you walk in. And as another idea on my uh, coat hangers on trees, a boom. But really, depend depends on your space, what you've got available, what you yeah, like your structure. Because if, if it's a TV, oh, sorry. Uh, Emma's just added she's got cable reels Ooh, oh like cable reels like cable like reels. cable reels we saw them at the showman show the other day we did and we were like oh we've got cable cable reel MB yeah we've got a local wood recycling project and a lot of stuff they give out away for free like pallets and that so we're all picking stuff up and um, every now and then I see 
giant cable reels for sale. And I'm like, Emily, do we need 20 giant cable reels? Actually, no, we don't that, at the that, moment. That's a segue into something completely different. That's not necessarily relevant to this particular point. But if you are looking for materials like that, that is a good, good shout, actually. And so we have in Southampton, the Southampton Wood Recycling Project. Check it out on Facebook. Yeah. And I think they've got a website as well. But yeah. there must be other places around the company, around the country that do exactly the same kind of thing. Basically, they go to, to come, because you can't throw pallets away. Or there's, something, there's some sort of There is always something, something weird you, about pallets. You can't pallets, recycle them, or you can't burn them or throw them or whatever there is. Know, so know, they there take is them all in, and then we literally, for Lydia Rose, our... our our five-year-old daughter's birthday party this year had a pallet wood long table. We're like, oh, where are we going to get pallets from? And we went and p- picked eight up completely yeah, for free. Yeah, they had, like, like <laughs> slightly, you know, I say naff loosely, naff ones for free. But if you want immaculate but ones, you have to things, pay for them. And they're still not yeah, expensive. But they had things like, so pallets and apple crates and wood reel, um, cable reels and stuff, loads of stuff. I so, mean, worst case, you go to B&Q and you get a sheet of chipboard, MDF, whatever, and get them to cut it, you know, into, into three... And you've got your bench, but aren't um, scaffold planks? Aren't they like 20, 30 quid? I'm not. I'm not. Look, I'm not saying go out and spend lots of money. We're just talking about different options, mm. you know. And but um, if, I say, if you have got something in your local area that's like Southampton Wood Recycling Project, do check it out because you can always have a bargain there yeah. for for something that's a bit quirky, something as a bit of a feature piece that you don't want to spend the world on because it's putting your coats up or whatever. You might find some mm. massive inspiration. And I just want to explain, it was just in my head, my coat hangers and trees idea came from, I right, we did a bell tent today at Winchester Rugby Club, which, which is next to Winchester Park Run. And what I thought about is we all hang our coats in the trees before we start Park Run. And oh. uh, that's what made me think about it. I just thought I'd share that. So any Park Runners out there? Hello this evening. So actually, I haven't done it in a while. I am I am a 150-odd run, but I haven't done it in a good few months. Have I? Yeah, we had a belt in Octo. It was um, it was for a memorial for someone actually. So we don't usually tend to do things in October. Very, very rarely do we th- do things in the cold because we don't like the cold. We like summer. This is um, our first memorial. I mean, we've done. First, uh, not a first memorial. We've done. Um, I've, I've done uh, funerals in my marquee days. Marquee days, yes. Yeah. So. You, you've done weddings, christening. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> same family, same church. Mm. Yeah. Um, but that was nice, and it was lovely. We did we did chill out tent today. That was in memoriam to someone who passed away. Who I think is a stunt double or a. They're in the new Dumbo. There's a new film. Dumbo film coming out next year. He's passed and he passed away. So they wanted a, more of a circus themed tent. No, obviously we don't do circus tents, but we, we did one of our red tents up nicely. With some chill out. They wanted it as a uh, contemplative area, contemplative which I, I think is quite with lovely. Harlequin, right? Harlequin bunting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, oh, that's, I, nice. I, that's me. I, well, I was about to go well morbid then. Let's. Uh, let, not that it's a problem, but let's move on to uh, happier topics. But, so, yeah, yeah. Um, Meg put some, oh, yes. some things about up there. Meg. She didn't have a specific question. Randomly, Meg's local to us. I don't know if I she know. knows she's local to Meg, us, but she's about a mile watching, and a half from us. When you're watching this back, we've been to your place. We've yes. been to the Hidden Tap. Meg, Meg um, is a, a brewster at a local, like, um, microbrewery, microbrewery, randomly. Good to know yes. someone who's in a microbrewery. Uh, Meg's question... I'm struggling to find a shop with the style of dress I want to try on and I need ideas of how to dress my outdoor space as my reception is on a farm. We'll get some photos. and Right, so she hasn't done it, but I think we're going to have a chat about it. The dress is a bit more difficult to talk dress, about. We, we would admit now we are not dress people. We are outdoor wedding people. So there's a bit yeah. of, But when it comes to finding your dress, it is so... You know, right, like, I'm a man. I know nothing about dresses. But ultimately, do not wear whatever you want. Like, unless she wants yeah, a traditional... I, I mean, would say... If it's, you're it's alternative, very... like Meg's clearly implying, she doesn't want a white or yeah. ivory traditional dress, then... Do you She's not... not said that at all, no, no, she hasn't, but... Okay, fair point. She's just put the style of dress It's very on. difficult dresses. And I would say, as a bride, who's been a bride myself, um, I... Really? I have been a bride myself. Yeah. <laughs> Married you, darling. It's the best day of my life. Um, <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I would say, take the stress off you a bit and stop focusing on the exact thing you are looking for now i was very specific i was looking for more of a fishtail so we have had a comment that someone's lost video signal so it all seems okay our end so um, yeah um I'm going uh, to talk about decorating do, farm do, 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 you, do you want to see if you can find on mine yeah and um, so i was looking for a fishtail high neck low back very specific. I didn't want frills. I didn't want lace. I didn't want this. And I was getting so stressed that I visited about fifteen shops and could not find what I wanted. I even went to a seamstress to see if she could make it. 
was well out of my budget in the end to get what I wanted made. And then actually, I just let go of it. I I actually ended up with the most opposite end of the spectrum dress of my dreams. And it was only because my best friend came with me and she went, try that on, just give it a go. And I was like, no, it is not me. I will look like a loo roll holder. Now, admittedly, I did look a little bit like a loo roll holder, but I loved up my dress. Hi, Jill. Um, yeah. My dress had skirt, a lot of skirt. I just did loads of loves from your account on the video. Okay, we'll see. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Amy. Hi, Jill. My, yeah. my dress had skirt. It had feathers. It had um, a little bit of lace in it. I did not want lace. It had everything I did not want. But when I put it on, I was like, oh, my word, this is amazing. And I would never have picked it up off that, off that peg because I was so adamant that I wanted a fishtail high neck low back in satin. Could not find it anywhere. Um, so, yeah. Don't worry too much about your dress. You do have time. Things you can do. You try on a load of styles, as many styles as you want. Just put things on you would never think of trying on and just put it on your body because you may find that actually what you want is nothing mm -hmm. that you thought you wanted. Um, if you don't find anything you like, um, try, if you happen to be on the second hand route or more vintage route, you know, there are, there are face bathing and wedding groups and stuff who are always putting their, their excesses on and yes. you might find something that way. Or go and find a seamstress, talk them through what you want, talk about your ideas, because actually there are varying levels of seamstresses out there who may be able to find you something in your budget that is you know, exactly what you want. And they can draw it out with you, work out exactly what your style is, and put something together that's absolutely amazing. Now, Meg, I know for a fact there are a few amazing Southampton-based seamstresses, so if you don't find um, what you would have bought in a conventional dress shop, please do send me a message and I'll happily put you in contact. Worst case, you can just get married in a yellow suit like you I did. did. Um, um, Alan's two suits for his wedding, his, his wedding outfit, cost more than my dress put together. Just, just, just. I don't know if that did, but we'll have that conversation off that. I've, I've just been sitting there thinking about the decorating of the farm. Like, decorating the farm, until we see any pictures, Meg, that you want to share with us, it is a bit difficult. But we did some bell tents, had a wedding this season. Uh, a very good photographer friend of ours called Becky Young Photography. Oh, we, did, yes. uh, we love her style, and she was at a farm. And what she chose to do... now. Bear in mind, she's creative and arty. So if you're creative and arty, this works for you. But she chose to try and replicate the farm and the surroundings oh, within the barn. Right? It was beautiful. So, like she drew the corn in chalk on the walls look, and had give, trees. Give a little bit of back to, the, to what the venue was. So she has the it was a family it was her farm. Husband but it was an open. It was, she was the actual wedding was in an open sided um, hay barn. So it was a three sided, very high high roof. But it was. Um, Breeze blocks around the bottom, and it was wooden slats around yeah, the top. Yeah, very um, industrial. Very industrial, very agricultural, rustic. Sorry. Agricultural. agricultural. And like Alan says, she she chalked in flowers from the field. Well, she, and, sorry, I'm, I'm being pedantic. She had a friend of her, hers who was like arty to come and do it. Yeah. They but, uh, they, they hung um, branches from the ceiling, which was they were slightly dead branches, but they had been taken from trees. Yeah, from just the trees farm. scattered around the farm. Um, yeah. They had a hay bale stage that they put together with the planks on, so the band was there. They had everything it was very rustic, very but, but it was very, beautiful, very wasn't it? minimal. It, yeah, I'd say yeah, 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 very minimal. Because it let the farm speak for itself. Less is more, and less is always more. And less we've, is we've more. talked about this many times, and many of our other asking experts. So do feel free to, to look back. But what we always say is, you get so consumed by your Pinterest, and I say this every year, the Pinterest. Well, board, we all do. Not Pinterest you. Is amazing, one gets but so you want consumed, to include yeah. everything from that Pinterest board and go. Bleh, that actually it can look sometimes a little bit bitty and a little bit messy. Just let the, the, the setting itself speak for itself yeah. and do less. Because ultimately, you guys, the people and whatever you put in place in the structure or the barn, whatever you're doing, that will... Yeah, because let's remember, like, right, this is the outside bride. I'm not being funny. And the reason we have outdoor weddings is because we get to have what we want, how we want, where, where we, we want. want. Yeah. And the where we want is the key part. So let's not try and cover or redecorate that something that doesn't actually need decorating. Let's embrace this amazing outdoors we're in yeah. and, and bring that in. That's why if you're having a marquee wedding, you have the biggest windows possible so you can connect with the outside. That's why if you have a TP wedding, you know, you make sure the doors are open. If you've got geodesic domes, you've got the doors open and all the clear, you know, um, clear, clear panels as possible. Or if you're then in an outdoor structure like a barn or a, I was about to say a shed. Stretch tent, even Stretch that. tent. You know, you, it's about connecting with the outside and, and enjoying it. So don't overcomplicate it. Replicate it where possible. Connect with it and all these other, like... Um, what I, yeah, what I was saying to Meg... <laughs> 
if you're watching on replay now, is start a new thread on the group, put down maybe five words, do it to do yourself, put five words of what you want your wedding to feel like, what kind of style of bride you are, because everyone's different, not everyone's, nothing wrong with it, not everyone's hessing and lace. No. And, and that you know, is great and it has its place, but you might be modern clean lines, you might be bright colours, you might be muted tones, whatever you Put five words in that post and let us know what you think and we'll get all of us guys in the group to kind of post you with some ideas of what, what you can be doing with it's that It's like space. an interactive yeah. Pinterest. Program. And also post link to your venue as well so we can see the space Well, I well. wondered that because we're local. I wondered whether it's just a friend's farm or a venue because yeah. we don't know many farm yeah. venues. So I presume no, it's it was And we will, we will help you give you some ideas for how you can dress your space. We are more than happy to do that. And I'm sure Sorry. all the guys and girls in this group will be happy to help you yeah. too. Can I just share another Alan story? So I was just hiccuping off the <coughs> wine. That's because before the wine, before we came on, I, I drank a can of raspberry mm, ale mm. that was bought for me for my birthday. And I got bought a load of alcohol for my birthday. And this was the last thing left because it said raspberry ale on the can. It was horrific. Never drink raspberry ale. And that's what was repeating. I'm going to say, I, I, had a, I had a little swig of it. It did not taste good. No. There are some things. I was in London was it last week, the week before. All right, look at us sharing our story. Uh, yeah. I was in London meeting a, meeting a friend, a, a wedding industry friend the other day, and um, we were in, in the bar overlooking, we were, where were we? You weren't even there. No. I was, I was in South there. Bank. I was in South Bank. We were drinking gin because... Does that's anyone outside of London know the South Bank? <laughs> <laughs> we were drinking gin, and I went to the bar, and I said, give me something I've never had before. I love my gin. I, I would love, ha happily try something new. He went, well, I've just had this gin. And, oh my goodness, it was a gin. can't even think of the name of the gin. It was a beautiful bottle, and I get swayed by pretty packaging quite easily. It's like, oh, that's nice. But it was brewed, or distilled from yeast, hops from beer. It was a beer kind of base of, oh, no, there are some things in this world that should not go together. That did not work well for me. Whereabouts, Jill? Sorry. Oh, Whereabouts in the UK? Did not taste good. It was quite grim, and I spent a lot of money on wondering, because it's in London, thinking, I'm going to drink this because I paid for it, but I wanted to get it in my mouth. Yeah. That's fine. Oh, good. Do you reckon we should move back to weddings? Uh, Jill's <laughs> just put, that's why I asked Jill, Jill's just put, having a TP in a field in a country park where we have volunteered for 10 years. Nice. Uh, and that's so special, isn't it? Even the park rangers are getting involved. It's going to be so rustic. So I asked Jill, that is so special, genuinely. I just, what I just said, I wondered where in the in That's the UK. really lovely. So yeah. the... Okay, Gillingham, Kent. Isn't your mum from Gillingham? That's Gillingham and Kent. Gillingham, Gillingham, Gillingham. Oh, is in Dorset. Man, I even mm. knew that. I knew uh, that. My, my mum was Kent. born in Gillingham. She's a Gillingham girl. Um, so my last bride that I event managed for in September, um, similar story actually, it really made me look. So they met, um, it was Alex and Paul, they met at a YMCA campsite. So they mm. um, there were some summer, summer school, you know, when they had all the summer camps. I feel we're being vague. We live in Botley near Southampton, so yeah. They were at some camps with all the kids coming in for the summer and they were the, you know, the young, free and easy, 18, 19 year old kind of reps coming in, doing activities and cheering up everyone. They fell in love at the YMCA camp. Mm, that's nice. And then they, um, you know, fast forward a few, a few years and they got married at the YMCA camp as well and it was so lovely because I've, I've literally just this week seen their, their wedding photos and their <laughs> sorry we're all linked in Emma whose question about the coats and the chairs used to live in Gillingham Gilling, Gillingham oh yeah Gilling. sorry Gillingham <laughs> sorry I even just um, tripped up. that's the raspberry yeah, ale anyhow so they we've just had the photographer photos come through and then he sent them to me as well this week and it's so nice to see them because they had the links there they went off for their couples photos around the campsite and the activity centre part and they were by the buildings and the archery bit and the climbing towers and so and their photos are lovely because it means so much so much more to them and same for us we didn't get married at the campsite but we Maybe got, we got, somewhere, special well, we got somewhere special to us and if you find somewhere that you have a connection to mm. it's so lovely because every single time we go back there now we get goosebumps don't we? We, we told this last week didn't we was this in a planning sessions video or ask an expert last Venues week last week yeah sorry for those of those <laughs> in the planning sessions we told this story yeah but uh yeah it's just um, um yeah if you get that connection so it's lovely we always get goosebumps when we go there and I imagine we'd say for you Jill you know if you're somewhere that's special to you and you have memories it's going to be so much more exciting well we you. did um a guide and her husband to be at her guide camp this season and yeah. um we do a we do a lot, and I think that's part of this outdoor thing. There is there's some um, Amy. I hope you don't mind me showing. I, I sharing. I know yours is at your family home, 
I know, Jill, you've just been telling us yours is at the place you volunteered at. And and I think we we we're, we're all really just, lucky. Well, we're, well, as I say, we're just those type of people who who that's what we want, that's what we know, that's what we love, and therefore we're lucky to have that as part of our life. And so, uh, so for much part as well, especially if it's somewhere that's really unique to you, like a family garden. You know, no one else is necessarily going to have that experience that you do. I mean, I always go as we drive past the field that we got married and go. I really hope I don't ever see a marquee in that Yeah, field. I think we would cry if we <laughs> ever share that If we see another person field. having a marquee in that mm-hmm. wedding in that film, we're like, oh, oh really no! Not, oh, that's really not, not a problem, but... No, you know. but um, so, and that's the same. You know, you're going to have something really unique to I think that says more about you and me than people who get married in <laughs> yeah. But apart from that, I think um, that's all we have to say this week. That's my line. I'm the one who draws the line under the night. Apart from that, though, I think that's uh, all we've got to say this Has week. anyone got any more questions? No, if you want to, we're, we're quite happy to stay on for another five minutes on a, on a Wednesday night. So if there is anything, feel free to uh, chuck it up. Um, so, yeah, I think otherwise we are, uh, you know, I think that's it. So what we would say is, I know we talked about the planning sessions, but if you're, if you're planning your own outdoor wedding, we do have the planning session six months. Mentioned. I know we had a lot of the brides, brides and grooms. I have the brides and grooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's been females during this week. A lot of the brides are twenty twenty slash twenty one brides, so you're probably very early stages. So this mm. is a perfect opportunity now to get involved with the planning sessions. Yeah, um, Some of you who are twenty nineteen or early Emma nineteen, says thanks. Yeah, thanks, Emma. Probably have got most of yours underway. But if you're in the early stages of your planning right now. Um, do check out the planning sessions. The first module is all about getting your shipping order, getting the groundwork together, getting the budget set, getting um, organised with your diary and working out when to put things in the diary and how to look at your diary. Um, and then once module one is done, we get into the nitty gritty of things like dealing yeah. with suppliers, we cover how to find, how to power find, generators, all, structures, all, everything you possibly um, need. Yeah. Um, so, uh, tens, uh, temporary event notices, everything's covered, isn't it? So, de- decor in. Um, yeah. um, where the plans, all of that. Yeah, that. and there's downloads, blog posts, videos supporting all of the uh, information. Fab. Right, Emma says thank you, guys. Um, after our Gillingham. Gillingham. Oh my goodness, how did I get it wrong that many times? Our Gillingham loving tonight. Jill, nice for coming along. Nice to meet you. Uh, nice to see everyone else who watched. Thank you very much this evening. Thank, Thank you, very, you much. very much. And if you haven't checked out our YouTube, Alan will put the link down below later. Yes. We would love it if you could because subscribe. Because it's still a fancy link for the moment until we get the outside bride. We're, it's that new, that's how new it is. It's so safe. new. We need 100 subscribers to get our own we do, unique we do. URL. So we've, well, we've only launched, well, we launched it this week, didn't we? Like Sunday or Monday or something like that? Mm-hmm. Or whenever. I, I know, it might have been back in last week. Anyway, that's it. Right. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's good. It always takes a, t- a bit of time to work out how to end this. So bear with us. So we're going to do this really like funny wave now and smile and go. Well, oh, no, I think it's it. I think if I click this button, we're done. Bye. Bye.